Everything old is new again. This is a brand new article from CNN about a six-year-old black grievance that first popped up online back in 2017. What's digital blackface and why is it wrong when white people use it? The article argues that white people shouldn't be allowed to use animated GIFs of black people in the replies on social media <laughs> to people's posts. You've seen them all, from Michael Jackson eating popcorn to Shaquille O'Neal busting out laughing and slapping his knee, but that's not considered to be racist. The article begins, maybe you shared that viral video of Kimberly Sweet Brown Wilkins telling a reporter after narrowly escaping an apartment fire Ain't nobody got time for that. Perhaps you posted that meme of supermodel Tyra Banks exploding in anger on America's Next Top Model, saying I was rooting for you, we were all rooting for you, or maybe you've simply posted popular gifts such as the one of NBA great Michael Jordan crying. If you're black and you shared such images online, you get a pass. But if you're white, you may have inadvertently perpetuated one of the most insidious forms of contemporary racism. You may be wearing digital blackface. <laughs> what is digital blackface? It is a practice where white people co-opt online expressions of black imagery, slang, catchphrases, or culture to convey comic relief or express emotions. Like I said, this is an old story that first popped up across the pond over in England. The BBC reported this idiocy back in 2017, asking, is it okay to use black emojis and gifs? Not if you're white, they say. Ever shared this or this? Nothing like a good reaction gif, right? Yeah. But you've probably noticed the most popular ones of black people being dramatic. <laughs> this is digital blackface. <laughs> No, actually, that has nothing to do with blackface at all. And neither does this episode of The Golden Girls, where one of the characters, Dorothy's son, was engaged to a black woman, and then her mother came over to meet the girls. Then Betty White's character enters the room, still wearing a mud mask from getting a facial. be Michael's parents. <laughs> Mama, put your glasses on. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> this is mud on our faces. We're not really black. <laughs> Hulu pulled that episode from their streaming service, so it's no longer available. Originally airing in 1998 and now down the memory hole because of black fragility. There's plenty more to come in this video, but real quick, subscribe to my channel if you're new here because you're not gonna find analysis and commentary like this anywhere else. This is Blackface, however. This is Jimmy Kimmel 20 something years ago when he actually was funny when he was a co-host on The Man Show, dressed up as Carl Malone. Sometime at night, Carl Malone look up in sky and say, what the hell going on up there? The UFO live on other planet, phoning home like E.T.? Carl Malone read on TV about white people getting deducted by alien, sticking all kind of hell up their butt, and that's a damn thing. But that wasn't the only time Jimmy Kimmel performed in blackface. Here he is doing a skit, also on The Man Show, dressed up as Oprah Winfrey. My body is my temple. That's why I start every morning with a brisk aerobic workout. But I can't do it alone. Workouts are easier when you have a partner. My workout partner is my maid, Marguerite. Here's a long lost clip of Jimmy Fallon on Saturday Night Live doing an impersonation of Chris Rock, which I guess technically you could say is blackface, and it's absolutely hilarious. Man, oh man, read this book. <laughs> I've seen Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and guess what? Not a lot of black folks on the show. Right. <laughs> Not a lot of black folks on the show. Know why? Because black folks don't like to answer questions. <laughs> oh, they want to be millionaires, but you got to ask that kind of questions like, in 1981, how many grams of crack did Rick James smoke when he recorded Super Freak? <laughs> <laughs> 
I think the reason whoever saved this video added in the static every few seconds is to try to throw off the content ID system because it is a clip from Saturday Night Live. And usually when you upload stuff like that, if it's more than you know, five or 10 seconds, it automatically gets detected and blocked. Of course, nobody cares when black people dress up as white people for a skit like the Waynes brothers did in the classic white girls movie. But because of black fragility, virtually every comic who has ever performed a skit as a black person in their entire career has apologized. And this is the working definition that I've come up with for black fragility, because we constantly hear about white fragility and we have to start using the Marxist terms against them. And so I define it as Discomfort and defensiveness on the part of some black people who live in a predominantly white culture due to fixating on long since past injustices, which they never experienced and weren't experienced by anyone in their family life today, causing them to imagine racism where none exists and pine away for living in a culture that is predominantly black instead. And stemming from that is this obsession in Hollywood of race swapping popular white characters for black characters in the sequels and remakes. But not just fictional characters. Now they're doing it for historical figures in historical docudramas. There's a new series on Netflix about Queen Charlotte, which is a spinoff of Bridgerton about the royal family. And Queen Charlotte is black. Here's the new trailer. There is reason they wanted me. Why me? Well, because you're black and there's a fetish in Hollywood for race swapping white characters for black ones, especially now historical figures. Charlotte, but there are worse fates than marrying the King of England. <laughs> a docudrama about the Queen of England starring a black woman. We saw the same thing happen to another Queen of England in a different television series about Anne Boleyn. And then when people in England were understandably upset about it and others mocked the bizarre casting decision, we saw headlines like this. Why the controversy over a black actress playing Anne Boleyn is unnecessary and harmful. <laughs> it's harmful. Which sparked memes like this. Netflix presents Polar Bears. <laughs> A <laughs> documentary, and this is probably the best. Ryan Gosling stars in the Martin Luther King biopic, <laughs> because why not? Everybody could agree that a white person playing Martin Luther King <laughs> or any black historical figure would be beyond absurd. It would be insulting. It would be hilarious if it was designed to be a parody, but these Hollywood type have a fetish of race swapping historical figures. It's part of their systemic anti-whiteism. It's part of their cultural Marxist attack against white culture. And today, the New York City's Teachers Union is hosting a seminar on the, quote, harmful effects of whiteness. So just being a white person is a problem for them. Participants will leave the workshop with a better understanding of how to center ourselves as a form of resistance against the harmful effects of whiteness in our lives. Oh, you mean like just developing modern society and <laughs> coming up with brilliant ideas like the Bill of Rights, and air conditioning and personal computers, the Internet, etc., etc. All of this stems from white envy. And over the weekend, I wrote up a working definition for white envy let me know what you think in the comments below. I would describe it as when black or other non-white people who live in a predominantly white culture feel jealous of the society because their ancestors lack the skills, knowledge, or possessions of others in the dominant culture, often resulting in resentment and demands for reparations instead of accepting personal responsibility for their own situations and working to improve their lives through hard work, discipline, and other ethical means of achieving success and happiness. For many years now, I've been ringing the alarm bell about rising anti-whiteism and documenting the increasing instances, which now, unfortunately, are systemic. They're built into the very fabric of numerous cultural institutions, from Hollywood to educational systems, in academia, 
to the work culture of the big tech social media platforms because it's now beyond obvious. Finally, some of the brand name conservatives and Republicans are starting to speak out against it. And it turns out that as usual, the supposed conspiracy theorists were right. And you may be interested in my new conspiracy theorists were right shirt. Order yours from my online store, markdash.com, or click the link in the description below. Or if you're a person of color who wants to help combat the systemic anti-whiteism, you may enjoy my new I Love White People shirt, but this is one that you should wear at your own risk. Like all of my designs, it's available in a t-shirt, long sleeve, and a hoodie, and a whole bunch of different colors as well. So head on over to markdash.com or click the link in the description below and check them out. <laughs>